<laughs> but in therapy, I mostly talk about my mother. Best. I'm not saying that I have a complicated relationship with my mom, but I once paid a hooker to tell me I am a good son. <laughs> I love my mom, but she's very overprotective, you know? Like her ideal situation would be if I moved back home and lived in a Tupperware. <laughs> One time I went to Iceland, and as soon as I got there, I got a text from my mom. She's like, Matt, I heard that somebody was murdered in Iceland. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm like, Mom, I told you, if I die, I'll text you. <laughs> I feel like I spend half the time I'm alive just telling my mom I'm alive. You know what I mean? Does anyone else have that? You know, like, it doesn't matter what it is. There could be like an outbreak of feline AIDS in Egypt. And my mom would be like, Matt, are you in Cairo, but as a cat? <laughs> I signed up to run a half marathon a couple years ago, and uh, I told my mom, which was a mistake, she's like, Matt, are you sure that's safe after the bombing at the Boston Marathon? And I was like, Mom, nobody's going to bomb a half marathon. Well, that's a plus, because if he kills me... It would be like if on 9-11, instead of flying a plane into the Twin Towers, somebody flew it into a TJ Maxx. It's like, yeah, it's sad, but it was already sad. <laughs> it's a clothing store that sells raisinets on the checkout line. There's not a lot of hope in that environment. Who shops there? Yeah, sure, I'll have some goobers with this blouse. Give me a blouse with a side of goobs. What the fuck do I got to lose? I shop at TJ motherfucking Max, AKA Marshalls for the blind. <laughs> <laughs>